What's up guys, BC Amplified, this is Amplified Q&A, our third Amplified Q&A. Now I was gonna be a bad son of a bitch today and really hit YouTube in the mouth because you guys saw yesterday's video, YouTube trying to fuck with your boy BC's channel again. So I was gonna smash him in the mouth today. But uh, I decided last second to be a good guy today. I wasn't gonna push the envelope, push the buttons as hard as I could push them. I wasn't gonna do that. And uh, the original photo that I had in the thumbnail, it was badass. Instead of the coffees that you guys see on that photo, there was like needles and shit. And let's just say there was a hammer placed strategically. Uh, it was just, a, it was a funny fucking photo that could have easily gotten this video uh, taking off the channel. It could have gotten my channel fucked with. Easily was going to get a strike. Um, but I, I think I was just trying to punch YouTube in the mouth and I thought long term like, you know, is that the smart thing to do? And uh, the topic of today's video, the question I was going to answer, I get a lot was, uh, you know, my thoughts on who do I think in WWE is on steroids and my thoughts on steroids. So to do that, I was going to have a funny photo, me in the gym with a bunch of fucking needles. That would really piss YouTube off. I remember I did a Brock Lesnar video months ago about is he on steroids and YouTube immediately fucking black paneled that shit. They striked it and I knew it was going to be taken down. So I had to fucking do it before they got to it. Um, and, and I knew right then and there it was just because of the word steroids. So fucking I'm like, I was going to put that in a title. I was going to have fucking needles and with me in the gym. But it was going to be educational. That's what they don't know. You know what I mean? Like that's that was the whole point. Like you're fucking with us for what you think is our content. If you just give us a listen, you'll know we're just shooting the shit about knowledgeable shit, man. And we're trying to drop education. So the photo was going to have me with fucking needles. But if you watch the video, it's about me talking about how fucking steroids are the worst thing you can fucking do. But I decided against it because even me right now mentioning the word steroids 15 to 20 times is probably going to get this video banned and, and taken down and striked at least yellow fucking yellow dollar signed right if you guys saw yesterday's video you know what i'm talking about so i decided last second you know what we won't discuss steroids we'll take out the needles we'll just put a bunch of fucking coffees in it and we'll do another fun question that i always get and that's bc do you honestly drink that much coffee in a fucking day because you guys know i always end my video saying let's go get a coffee no i really do guys i drink that much when I'm in the, the gym, all right, that's literally going to be about six to nine coffees a day because you're talking about the morning coffee, sometimes two. Then you're talking about a pre-gym coffee, then a post-gym coffee, a coffee in the evening, and then two at night. So that's easily going to add up to six to nine, depending on give or take one or two. So absolutely, on a regular gym day, that's what I do. I don't recommend that for everybody. It's not the most healthy thing in the world to have coffee before the gym, caffeine and sugar. And then right after the gym, caffeine and sugar, definitely not what you're supposed to do, definitely not what you should do. So I'm not advocating that. BC Amplify just does a lot of shit that I probably shouldn't do, but it's just so much more fun. And I love my fucking coffee. But the six to nine cups on a gym day is nothing, guys, because on a normal day, I just want to let you guys know, literally one to three cups of coffee. But it's still, I guess you could say that's excessive, but I always have at least one. One to three, gym days, six to nine usually, and gym days for me is about four to five times a week, so that's a lot. Um, and then on top of that, you have, uh, whenever I'm acting, that takes precedence over any normal day or any gym day. Whenever I'm on set, for those of you that don't know, when you're an actor, you literally do 12 to 16 hours on set, depending on what the crew and production actually needs that day. You're on set for at least 12 hours normally, and it could up to be 16, maybe even 17, 18 hours. So you film uh, just a chunk of the whole day. You get about two hours of sleep and you're filming the whole day. And guys, it's not just like you show up to set, you film your one scene and then you get to go home. No, usually as an actor, you have several scenes and they're not back to back to back. Production does not work around your schedule. You work around their schedule. In other words, you show up to set, you first have to go through hair, makeup, wardrobe. You have to be checked out by production. Make sure you're ready to be camera ready. Once that happens, then you start, then you get, you, you, then you're going to get, first of all, you make sure that you have your scenes all in order. Make sure you know your shit because they are going to call you whenever they need you, whenever they want you. Um, so know your shit. You always, always want to show up and get what's called your sides because that's also going to show you when everyone else is showing up. That's going to show you everyone else's uh, dialogue for the other scenes. Sides are very important. 
you want to go over that. All of that is, is a lot of coffee, guys. When you're in hair, makeup, wardrobe, you're going over your sides, you're waiting for production to actually talk to you, see you. Right there, you've had about two to four coffees. Then you start your filming day. Again, you could film one scene. You may have to wait six hours until your next scene. Then you film that. Then you may have to wait another fucking four, five, six hours. It's a process. My point is, throughout the whole day, you're doing nothing but drinking that complimentary coffee that they have for 24-7. You're drinking a lot of fucking coffee because you have a lot of downtime. Right? I mean, luckily for me, I have a lot of business ventures, so I'm always on the phone or I'm on the computer. I'm always doing something, but it's still downtime. You're drinking a lot of coffee. So literally between 10 to 12 cups, we've actually counted this before several times, me and uh, some buddies on set, 10 to 12 cups of coffee uh, while I'm filming something. That's a lot. Again, I don't recommend it, guys. BC Amplified is one of a fucking kind, though. So I'll do it up. But coffee, too much of that, dude, is not good for you. I remember the Ultimate Warrior told a story once about how him and Randy Macho Man Savage... Every time they would show up to, uh, the, to fucking, I almost said to set. Everyone, every time they would show up to the event, the arena, him and Macho Man, the Ultimate Warrior Macho Man, would steal all the coffee, the big fucking jugs and bins of coffee, and they'd go to their, their private locker room and they'd lock the door. And it would just be them two just chugging down coffee, man, before their matches. Again, not a smart thing to do to chug down coffee before a wrestling match, but the Warrior and Macho did it up. Now, on the flip side, guys, they both passed away from the same thing, right? I believe they were, they were heart attacks. So, I mean, you know, some of that craziness and what the coffee did contributes to that. You guys know I'm fucking amplified. I drink a lot of fucking coffee. You know, I look at role models like that and the, and the heroes that I grew up with, like Randy Savage and, and uh, Ultimate Warrior. And, and, and I do have to, you know, I realize that the correlation, they drank a lot of coffee. They were always crazy and fucking lunatics. And, you know, they beat to their own drum. And that's all the shit that I am. So there are times where I stop myself and I'm like, ooh, should I have this extra coffee? You know, I, I seriously, literally, guys, think about things like that. Like Randy Savage, Warrior, and like, sure, everything's good and fucking fine right now while we're young. But when we get older, all that shit catches up to us. Look at the nature boy, Ric Flair, right now. You know, all prayers, strength, and support to him right now and his family because he's in a hospital bed right now. Years and years of the toll taken on his body has put him in there. So we do, I do want to preach a good message here, guys, and that is take care of your bodies when you're young because when you're older, you're going to wish you did. There's an old saying, I forgot who said it, but they said, had I known I was going to live this long, I would have taken care of my body when I was younger. Because we don't know. When we're younger, we think fucking, you know, this could end at any time. Or we think we're going to live forever. And when you get older, you start feeling your body wearing down. You realize, oh shit, we are mortal. And we got to take care of our bodies. So I didn't want this to turn into a fucking lecture, guys. But, I, you know, it sounded like I was promoting drinking a lot of coffee. I'm not. I'm just a weird dude. I'm a fucking little bit of a lunatic. A little bit of a fucking edgy dude. Um, I'm always fucking little out there. I need fucking the energy. I need the fucking amplification and coffee when I'm guzzling that shit does the trick, but I do not recommend it for you guys. All right. Nowadays you see like fucking 12 year olds up in Starbucks ordering lattes and shit. Unfucking real. And by the way, I do get asked not a lot, but I do get asked a lot about not a lot, but I do get asked a lot. That made sense. I do get asked my favorite coffees, guys. If it's straight coffee, I like Dunkin' Donuts and then Wawa. If it's lattes, I like Starbucks and then Wawa. So Wawa is, is a constant second. They got good coffees. But if it's straight coffee, Starbucks doesn't make the list. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts would be the top spot. And if it's lattes, then it's going to be Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts does not make the list. All right. So I don't know if you guys got special coffee places you like. I know in New York City, there's a shitload of little, uh, I call them mom and pop shops um, that are not big chains. So those are always cool to give your money to because you're trying to help out some of these small businesses. Um, but I'm just, you know, I actually, I didn't grow up in New York. I came up from fucking Boston. And uh, over there, you had a lot of Dunkin' Donuts. You had the chains, you know, Starbucks. So when I went over to New York, it was kind of fucking, you know, I just continued that shit. But yeah, that's the coffee talk, guys. I hope you, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit more lighthearted 
than the, what was going to be the topic, which was steroids. Which, by the way, some idiots do ask me that shit. No, BC Amplified does not do fucking steroids. If I did steroids, I'd be looking like some Brock Lesnar motherfucking freak right out of the lab. Trust me, as badass as that would be, I would never put that junk in my fucking body. Alright guys, so next up, I forgot if this question was asked on Twitter from one of my followers or right here on YouTube from one of my subscribers on in the comment section. Uh, I forgot where I read this, but it really did, it correlates kind of with the whole coffee thing because I was actually in line reading comments and uh, this question actually made me stop and think, hmm, you know, like fucking, that's a good question because I can easily come up with a better card than what WWE has just distributed for SummerSlam 2017. And this question was, BC, if you were to book SummerSlam 2017, what matches would you have had? And, uh, and I'm paraphrasing. It was something like that, though. Like, what would you have done for SummerSlam? This isn't amplified booking, by the way. This is just, what matches would I have put in to SummerSlam to make it a cool card and not what we get this Sunday? That's easy, guys. I'm only going to do five. I mean, SummerSlam went and did like 12 to 14 matches, something like that. I'm only going to name five. I could easily put together 12 to 14 better matches than WWE did. But here's five. That would easily destroy all 14 that they put together. First and foremost, I would do Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the United States Championship. No other championship, just the U.S. Championship. Now I know, everyone's saying, no BC, they're waiting for WrestleMania, and that's where it should be. Guys, obviously we know that's where it should be, but think about it. It's WWE. They're not going to give them enough time. They're not going to do it correctly. WrestleMania will be stacked with like 20 fucking matches. They'll give them 20 minutes tops. So why all of us are, are, are cannot wait till AJ meets Shinsuke at WrestleMania, I'm thinking about the business side of it. They're not going to do it right. And the match is not going to come off like it should. SummerSlam, you have a little bit more wiggle room, right? I would take off a couple of matches and make sure that they get an hour-long Iron Man match at SummerSlam. Shinsuke versus AJ Styles for the U.S. Championship. It doesn't have to be at WrestleMania, guys, because again, as much as we would love to see that, and that's where it should be, WWE would easily fuck that up, even more than they would have done at SummerSlam. But at least if you take a few matches off, you could make that a spectacle. The match of the summer. Your second biggest pay-per-view, it's the U.S. Championship, not the World Championship, no Universal Championships, U.S. Shinsuke AJ, hour-long Iron Man match, because you know damn well Vince will not give that to them at WrestleMania, and they deserve an hour. So I would put it at SummerSlam as your main event. Now, what happens for the World Championship? I would have Jinder Mahal defend his championship against Sami Zayn. Because, again, guys, I would have the build-up much better than anything WWE just built up. I would have four, five, six, seven, eight weeks to make banging-ass storylines. And I would make the storyline here that Sami Zayn wants a title shot and Jinder Mahal laughs him away like, get out of here, jobber. But Sami Zayn is like, dude, you were a jobber at one point until you changed your mental way of thinking, until you changed your ways, until you got your break. You were where I was. I know I'm good. These people know I'm good. I know I'm great. These people know I'm great. I just need a chance. You are in this spot. Now, if you ain't got the guts, if you ain't got the fucking balls, that's one thing. Just say it. Or you can man up. This will lead Jinder Mahal to say, Kid, you actually want a shot? You think you can take my title? Let's do it then. Sami Zayn, Jinder Mahal. That's a real cool fucking match. And it's not the main event, so you don't have to sell your whole pay-per-view around it. And that's a match that'll get people intrigued, man. Could Sami Zayn actually pick up the victory? And by the way, yes, I would have Sami Zayn actually pick up the championship at SummerSlam. I think Sami Zayn could still be something really fucking cool in this business. They just don't give him a fucking chance. Gender Sami Zayn World Championship, if done correctly and the storyline was made correctly? Fuck yeah. You want to talk storylines? My third match that I would put together for SummerSlam 2017... Demon Balor versus Bray Wyatt. So that's one thing they got correct. What they didn't get correct is everything else. They booked this like a fucking four-year-old took a crayon and started booking the shit on a piece of paper. This was horribly booked. We just found out that the demon's coming back literally on Monday Night Raw, six nights before fucking SummerSlam hits the airwaves. 
That was so stupid. A few weeks ago, we saw the heartbeats of the Demon Baylor, and then all of a sudden, Finn Baylor got the upper hand. Finn Baylor got the upper hand on Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt fucking runs away through the crowd. So what the fuck were the heartbeats for? That should have been to show that, yeah, Bray Wyatt is getting the best of me, but the Demon will come back, and then we'll see who's in charge. We'll see who's got the top spot. That was the whole... It's a simplistic storyline that WWE somehow fucked up. But it's a story, it's a, it's a fucking match that needs to happen. Demon Balor versus Bray Wyatt? That fucking just belongs. And WWE found a way to fucking butcher it. So yeah, that would be my third match. But I would have built it up so much more cooler, man. I would have made the suspense. I would have made the suspense for the Demon character to come back at an all-time high. So when he does, it's one of the biggest pops of the night in Brooklyn. Fourth match, simplistic booking. Why go away from it? Bailey versus Sasha. Injuries aside, whether she really is or not, all that bullshit. We're talking about from booking on. I would have had from the beginning, Bailey versus Sasha Banks. That would have been the match that I would have been going for. Now, if an injury occurred, okay, then we go from there. But Bailey, Sasha Banks, they had their fucking epic match in Brooklyn, NXT TakeOver. And Brooklyn knows how special each one of them are individually slash together even more so. Yes, I said Brooklyn even knows that Bailey has something. The booking of Bailey has been shit, but Brooklyn knows that Bailey has something in her. And when Bailey takes on Sasha in Brooklyn, it's pure magic. Why fuck with that? You have them going for the championship, the Raw Championship at SummerSlam. It's going to blow the roof off of the Barkley Center. That's match number four. Match number five, I get super fucking creative. Universal Championship. Braun Strowman versus Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. One-on-one -on -one in what's called a Beast Mode match. In a Beast Mode match, yeah, that's right, from fucking BC's Mastermind, you would have to be basically beat... No, not basically. You would have to beat your opponent three times, three different ways. You would first... You have to do it in this order. You have to first pin your opponent... Then you have to make your opponent tap out. Then you have to knock your opponent out. Now, it doesn't have to be simultaneously. It's not like you pin somebody, then pick them up and fucking uh, drop them back. Then you tap them out and then you pick them up and then you knock them out all in like two minutes. No, you could pin them in the first three minutes and then come back 12 minutes later and get a submission on them. And then 20 minutes later, knock them out. But Because your score will keep tally. But you have to first pin your opponent, then tap them out, then knock them out. And it does not have to be consecutive. In other words, Brock could pin Braun. And then five minutes later, Braun pins Brock. It's just whoever reaches those three victories first. It's called a beast mode match. And I would love to see Braun versus Brock. Let's see who the real fucking beast is. When you defeat your opponent three times, three different ways, two fucking monsters colliding, a beast mode match for the Universal Championship. Now, if we're being honest with each other, right, guys? WWE put, like, including the pre-show, the kickoff, they got, like, 12 to 14 matches, don't they? I just named you five of what I would do. And if you're being honest, you know damn well, my five easily got you more excited than their 12 to 14 matches. That's what fucking... Booking and using your creative fucking mind, using what you were born with, first of all, just your mind. Even if you ain't over the top creative, use whatever creativity you got. It seems like WWE just lost track of what the fuck is even creative. They're hiring these Hollywood fucking writers, and the product just seems to be suffering more. Maybe you need people who know the product writing the shit. Maybe that's a concept that got lost in translation. Who the fuck knows? But... I will say this, those five matches alone got me fucking super pumped. And then I come back down to reality. Oh yeah, we got what, what WWE is actually giving us Sunday at SummerSlam. And then we're just not excited anymore. Next up, guys, a little bit more serious, right? I, I do get asked this quite often, and it's, uh, you know, my thoughts on basically the race relations and, and, and the racial conflicts uh, here in this country especially, but across the world as well. The first thing I would tell you guys, I, I can't really jump too much into it because that would start to be political. I don't like to talk politics because it leads to just fucking, uh, just blow for blow fucking conversations, man, and it never ends up good, and... Everyone has a different opinion and everyone has a different way of looking at life because 
we're all different in many ways, man. You, you can't fucking convince somebody to think like you do. So as passionate as you are about politics, m most cases, you really do have to keep that shit to yourself, guys, because we're all our fucking, we all have our different way of thinking. What I will say, stop watching the news. Uh, that's the best thing I can tell you guys, honestly. The, the best way to live a pure life and to accept everybody and to honestly love everybody is to just stop being influenced by the, by the dipshits, the naysayers, the people who have agendas. Stop listening to them because you will, you'll be consumed. Your head will be consumed with absolute bullshit. Um, the media has agendas, guys. Stop watching the news. Live your life the way you were taught to, the way you were brought up. When you go into the streets, how would you treat people? How would you treat yourself? If you had a fucking twin or you just had another you and you were, you were emotionally attached and you were walking by each other, how would you treat yourself? Like garbage? Like trash? Or would you show yourself respect? That's what you show everybody else. Uh, bottom line, there's a reason I have a fucking Chinese girlfriend. There's a reason my best friend is Hispanic. There's a reason, guys, I'm going to tell you a personal story. When I was younger, I was fucking... I, I was a little bit of a troublemaker. Even back then, I liked confrontation. I liked just really, like... Like... Getting to the bottom of, like... Uh, of, of shit. You know what I mean? Like, like, I didn't let shit go. I couldn't let it just fly as much as I should have. Um, I, I never really did that. I always had to push the envelope. I always had to push the button real hard. Like, yeah, did you just fucking, you staring at me because you don't like me? Well, what the fuck are you looking at? Because you're not going to get away with just staring at me, motherfucker. I'm going to ask you why. If it's an answer I don't like, then I'm going to fucking punch you in your mouth. You know, I was a real bad dude, I thought. And, uh, because of that, you know, I led into some bad situations and I got put away as, as, as when I was younger, you know, put away, meaning yes, put away in, in a place that like puts you in a locked down space. You know, I don't like saying the word anymore. 2.0 visits there often. Um, and while I was in there, guys, there is, um, you'd be surprised. There was a whole like protocol you had to follow. The white people had to stick with the white people. And the black people had to stick with th their group because that's just, it's the politics that you had to play. And you couldn't really cross. And what happened was I got there and, and I don't play by those rules because I'm never going to let other people influence my day. Even if I am locked up somewhere, I'm going to live the only way I know how. And that's respecting everybody and doing what the fuck I want. Um, so what I would do is I would, you know, leave the little fucking little cell area that, that you, you're housed in and you go into like a pod. That's where everybody congregates in one huge space. But the whites would always be at the tables playing cards. Black people, for the most part, would all be on the deck. You could actually go outside. It was closed off. It was caged up. But it was the deck. You had a basketball court there. They did a lot of, uh, you know, exercises or just like push-ups. So basically you could say the white people stayed inside, the black people were always outside. And, and uh, for me, it was just like I, I grew up in projects and, and I always fucking was playing basketball and that's what I wanted to go do. I didn't want to play cards. I don't even like cards. I don't want to sit down. You guys know me by now. I'm fucking amplified. I like to fucking move. I like to get in people's face. I want to get out in that court. School motherfuckers. And then fucking, you know, if there's a hard foul, I want to get up in motherfucker's face. I want to yell. I want to scream. And then afterwards, I want to shake hands and fucking like, uh, you know, I want that, that, that competitiveness and that confrontation. And, and I just wanted to fucking, you know, that's just what I felt comfortable doing. And uh, so I went out there and I played ball and everyone was like, what the fuck is this motherfucker doing outside? And then the, the fucking the white people inside are like, get that motherfucker back. Who is that mother that newbie? Who's the fucking newbie? Get them in here. So, uh, you know, I had some white people pretty much. You know, first, I had uh, this one black guy, Tony, really one of my, he ended up being one of my best friends while I was in that place. Um, and he said, listen, man, I know you're new, but you probably shouldn't be out here. I'll go back inside. And I go, no, I'm good, man. Thank you. I'm, I think I'm good. He said, no, really, dude, I, 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 you're, you're only going to make things kind of bad for us. Go inside. And I'm like, why? What the fuck? And he didn't want to tell me. And I'm like, Fucking hey, all right, I'll fucking go. The second I get inside, I get this fucking old white dude in, in my face like, don't ever do that again. You can't go out there. You sit down. You're going to play cards when you're out. 
that's when I knew like, oh shit, there's a whole fucking protocol here and I'm about to fucking blow this motherfucker up or fucking go down trying. And I let everybody know by that fucking day where I stood, I'm going on that court. I'm playing fucking basketball. Anybody who wants to whoop me out there, literally kick my fucking ass, not in basketball, kick my fucking ass. You can try it out there, motherfucker, but I'm taking down 20 of ya. And when I go back inside, for you white motherfuckers, anybody who doesn't like me being out there, if you want to try kicking my ass, come on. But I'm taking 20 of you motherfuckers down with me. And I think it was the respect. I was so young. And I was so fucking set in my ways. Like, no, I don't want to play cards. I'm going to play basketball. I get along with this group better. I, we laugh at the same shit. We talk about it the same fucking way. We like the same things. Why would I sit down my whole fucking day and play cards? Because I'm white? Fuck out of here. I want to play basketball. So everyone knew that day that I, where I stood. And every single day that my little fucking cell door opened and I'd come out, I'd go right fucking outside. And I'd get the dirty looks. All the fucking old white dudes would be like, oh, here he goes. Going to play with the black people. And I'd come out and the fucking... I went where I was most fucking comfortable while I was there. What I liked doing. And did it ruffle feathers? Absolutely. There was a time where the CO actually came up to me and said, are you sure you want to do this? Because this could be trouble. This might not be good. And I said... The fuck are you talking about? I'm playing basketball. Somebody's got an issue or people. Come on, motherfucker. I don't care what weapon you got, but whatever you got to do, you ain't going to stop me from playing basketball with whoever the fuck I want. So that was supposed to be a little story, guys, that uh, went a little longer. My, my point is don't ever let anybody tell you who you can hang around with, who you should be liking and not liking, um, and, and don't just, just be yourself, man. How would you fucking act in real life? You don't got to put on a front. There's two types of people in this world. That's it. There's cool motherfuckers and there's absolute douchebags. You don't separate people by color or fucking religion or fucking genders or, or what they are, straight, gay, whatever the fuck they choose to be. You don't separate them that way. You separate them by if they're really fucking cool or if they're a douchebag. That's how I was brought up, man. I, I grew up in fucking projects, man. And and my parents still had enough fucking you know, knowledge to bring me up the right way. If you guys need being brought up the right, right way or weren't, that sucks for you. But you better change your tune real quick. But again, what I will say, guys, I don't play the whole Republican Democrat shit. I'm for Donald Trump or Donald Trump's the devil. I hate that shit. Just don't watch the news. Make decisions based on what you fucking know and what you were taught and brought up doing. And if you were not taught and brought up the right way, learn how to be fucking taught and get brought up the right way. Because there is a right way and it's, it's about respecting each other, man. That's not preaching. That's not a lecture. That's literally how you have to fucking live life. You can't just have fucking... Man, I, I hope that helps, dude, you know, because I right now we, we just think because of the media, we think there's just political parties, Democrats, Republicans. We think it's just Donald Trump is the devil or Donald Trump has a fan base and they're racists. It's all bullshit. The media it has an agenda. They're trying to fill your head that there's a fucking like civil war going on. Meanwhile, people like me have their good friends all fucking black. My fucking best friend's Hispanic. My girlfriend's a fucking Chinese. What the fuck, man? Like, like I know how to live. I, I just hope that you guys do too. And, and, and people that, that, that don't know how, I hope they figure it out, man. But I'll shut up about it there. That went too long anyway. I can't go too much into detail because then you start going into politics. But it's just about respecting each other. Um, you, you know, Learn about different cultures. Learn about different people because you'll find out they ain't so different than you. And the differences that there are, those are the cool things that make them even more special. Mind-boggling to me that we need the media to tell us what to think and what's going on in the world. No, it's good to know what's going on in the world, absolutely. And it's good to make uh, fucking knowledgeable decisions on where you should stand in the world, in the world's fucking what's going on in it. But don't just be sheep. 
Don't just think that the agenda they're pushing down you is what's really going on and, and, that, and that somehow there's a big fucking race war going on in, the, in our country and other countries. There's not a fucking race war. The media is making it look that way. I'm surrounded every day with different fucking races and we're, we're laughing, having a great fucking time. I see what's really going on in the world. The media, it's like some other fucking third world shit that they're fucking creating. And the third world becomes the real world because they've created the stage for it. So then you have actual groups coming together and colliding. Yes, there's absolutely going to be hateful fucking supremacists and other hateful groups. You're never going to really just get rid of hate, unfortunately, guys. We just have to concentrate on bringing up our kids the right way and ourselves doing the right thing. You're never going to get rid of it, though. But bringing another whole group to go and fight that group, that's not going to solve shit. That's not solving anything. And that's what they want you to think, man. It's just going to be, it's going to be a violence versus violence thing. And as long as the originators that showed up to protest, as long as they're at fault, then the other people that went to beat their ass, they're, they're okay. No, it's not okay to just fucking start whipping each other's asses. Yes, the hate part is bad. That's what we have to get in control first. But two wrongs aren't going to make a right. And the media right now is trying to de de literally divide us. Don't let them do that, guys. Think for yourself. Be yourself. How would you like to be treated? Thank you for listening to that fucking spiel. All right, guys, so clearly we went extra long on every single one of our topics today. Um, so all apologies. We do have to end this video. I'm going to end it with a, um, a, a couple of quick topics. First one, I, I was asked this on Twitter many times and on uh, YouTube's comment sections, and that was uh, my thoughts on Okada Omega 3. What were my thoughts on it? Guys, it was an okay match. They gave themselves a 30-minute time limit so they wouldn't go into other matches, obviously, because it was a stacked card. Sound like something else you know? At least they give them the time limit, though, and not just like, oh, oops, last second. Like, we have too many matches. Go out there and put on a six-minute match. No. At least they fucking give them enough time. 30 minutes is still good for Okada Omega. And it was good enough to put on a really good match. Definitely, out of the three, it was three out of three, right? I mean, the first two, I believe, were better. But it's almost like a sequel in a movie. Most sequels are going to be worse than the original. Now, in some cases, some people look at The Godfather, for instance, where, um, you know, the sequel was better than the original. Home Alone 2, some people think, was better than Home Alone. There's some sequels, I, I'm sure you guys can name some more in the fucking comments that, that I fucking probably even agree with. But uh, for, the, for the most part, sequels don't always really live up to the original. And uh, this is, that's kind of the, the right analogy for Okada Omega. Really good match, but nothing that lived up n even near the, the first two, especially the first one. But again, really good match. I want to end this video, guys. There was a little bit of an update. One of my videos, you guys, if you, if you did see the video yesterday about YouTube fucking with me and flagging my videos and saying they're not advertiser friendly. Um, I, I had it, I had a few videos manually being reviewed. I wanted YouTube to take a second look. Because uh, a lot of them I didn't think were, were that fucking, you know, they weren't that bad. I mean, uh, there's F-bombs, yes, but there are a, a ton of videos. So many fucking thousands upon thousands, maybe even in the millions of videos that drop so many F-bombs, guys. And they have advertisers all over it. No problem whatsoever. So, I, I you know, and then yesterday I did the experiment where I put out a video that literally had no F-bombs, no swears at all. And it still got flagged. So the experiment that I that I tried, sure enough, I caught YouTube in their own bullshit. The thumbnail was not bad. The title was not bad. And there was no swears in it. No insinuating violence or no hate, no nothing. And it still got flagged. So I started manually reviewing some videos. They sent back one of them, guys, that, that, that the only thing bad in it was some F-bombs. Um, but again, so many videos have that. And, and advertisers, there's no problem with it. So I sent in a manual review. They gave me a response. And I, my review got denied. They're going to keep it flagged. Check it out for yourself. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for WWE SummerSlam Amplified Booking. That's right. We're going to do the Amplified Booking tomorrow. Saturday, we're going to do Weekend Update. So Weekend Update is being pushed back one day. Amplified Booking tomorrow. As I leave you guys for today, again, check out their response pretty much saying that my videos are going to be, be remaining flagged. My first one got denied. I expect the rest to follow suit. Unfucking real. BC Amplified. We're going to get a big-ass coffee right now.
We'll check you later. So this is it, guys. This is one of, I'm expecting many emails from YouTube this morning. This is the first one um, because I did submit for request a bunch of manual reviewing that I want them to do of videos that they flagged yesterday because I felt they were flagged wrongfully. Um, they, you know, they're claiming it's because of things like thumbnails or something in the title isn't right or wrong and or language in the video. And I proved yesterday I made a video about Baron Corbin cashing in. It was a SmackDown video. And I literally made sure the thumbnail was perfect. I made sure that the title was perfect. I made sure that the content in the video had no swears, no F-bombs, nothing like that. And it still got flagged, guys, proving that YouTube is just pinpointing certain channels and then randomly taking videos and flagging them. Because I proved yesterday, I, that was an experiment that I did on purpose to see if YouTube was going to fuck with a perfect video. And they sure enough, they did it. So they can take a video like this, which I know for a fact I definitely swore a lot in. And they can say, okay, that's foul language. It's not suitable for advertisers. Then I'd be like, you know what? That's fine. That's okay. Now I know up front that if I swear in a video, I won't be getting paid. That's fine. I'll still swear in certain videos because I don't need the money. So if I'm passionate about something, I'm going to flip out and then I'll fucking drop F-bombs. That's fine. But at least tell me up front the truth. Don't sit there and tell me it's language when it's not. Don't sit there and tell me it's a thumbnail when it's not. Or that it's, the, it's something in the title. When I just proved yesterday it was the perfect video and you still flagged it. So videos that are dropping F-bombs are, are getting flagged just as much as videos that I don't drop any swears. And by the way, a bunch of videos that I swear in are still eligible for all advertising. And you just randomly picked a shitload that are not eligible. It looks random as fuck. It looks like this is something that either WWE or YouTube or WWE and YouTube together are pinpointing certain channels and trying to get them to shut down. What better way to do that than to hit them in their wallet, right? I mean, people like YouTube, they think, oh, in WWE, they probably think, okay, they make videos, a bunch of videos a week. They probably think this is a full-time job and do this as a full-time job. Well, they've never met somebody like B motherfucking C then because this is far from a job to me. This is a hobby. I have many other ways of fucking income, plenty of fucking income. This is a hobby. So I'm not going anywhere. And if you try to punch me in the mouth, YouTube, I'm going to fucking punch you 10 times harder. I'm going nowhere. But for now, we'll check you later.